the regular beer project looks at Schaefer beer introduced in 1842 um, this is America's oldest lager beer brand Schaefer glass I bought this at a flea market for like a dollar 20 years ago almost uh, now I know someone will bring up the point well Yingling's the oldest brewery in America this is true and no one is look at that no one is disputing that um, but Schaefer beer this brand here this red and gold thing is actually the oldest continuously produced beer brand well we say continuously none of the American beer brands were produced from 1919 until uh, 1933 during the ridiculous prohibition period although many brewers sold uh, different ingredients and they would warn the customers that they had to be careful not to mix the ingredients in a particular manner you know they would say don't mix these ingredients in this particular order and according to this recipe because if you do mix them that way it would it would produce this style of beer um, so don't do that they would put that disclaimer out to protect the consumer from accidentally making beer at their home which was a good thing for the companies to warn them about um, already prayed here I have some hogshead cheese that Joe Paralu made some crackers, saltine crackers. Um, this Campbell's black bean cumin and cilantro soup, which is one of the two, whatever they call the Latino family soups that Matherns got last year, and they did not sell. They literally sold maybe two cans of each case over a year so they decided to discount it for 79 cents yeah it's best before December 2015 um, I had bought them when they were full price like $1.99 or $1.79 they were really good and I couldn't figure out why people didn't buy it but they did not so now they're just trying to get them out of the store before they go out of date and I think a beer like this would pair well with some soup and I put the habanero sauce pepper and I had some Vermont cheddar cheese the real light pale cheddar cheese underneath to melt in there if you get onto the Schaefer website or the main Paps Brewing Company website they tell you a lot about it but they don't give you the ABV or the International Bitterness Units they don't tell you that they just say well Schaefer's made with common six row barley malt which is which is the cheaper variety of barley malt, so they're upfront about that. And um, with uh, six hop varieties, however, so they add six different hop varieties to give it a kind of an individualistic spicy flavor. And I don't, if you've never had Schaefer <coughs> lager, you might pick up on that. We get the Schaefer light here in Hammond, north of me, and in Metairie, New Orleans, east of me. But not in my town anymore. Schaefer Light is available in 12 packs and 6 packs. Uh, 12 packs and um, 24 packs. There was a store here since out of business that was selling Schaefer 24 ounce cans. Um, that may have been 10 years ago. And so uh, that was a liquor store, and liquor stores typically don't do well in Louisiana because gas stations and grocery stores sell liquor, wine, and out and beer. So there's really no reason for liquor stores to exist. So it didn't make it. it was there a good while, but any anyway, regardless. Uh, If you get on the Schaefer website, the, there's a photo and it shows 
12 ounce bottles, like quart bottles, 40 ounce bottles, different size cans. And I emailed them one time and I said, um, of course it's always routed to Paps, but I said, hey, uh, where can I get bottles of Schaefer? And the lady wrote back and she said, well, actually, that was just an old photo we had and we posted we posted on our website. We don't get those. We don't make bottles anymore. That was years ago. But they do make bottles, but only apparently the 40-ounce glass bottles. And I was glad to buy that on U.S. Highway 40 in downtown Baltimore. I wouldn't stop there now. But three years ago, I did, and I bought that. Um, I bought this 12-pack of cans in New York City at Flair Beverages in Manhattan on 9th Avenue up by University Bridge. I truthfully did not see Schaefer in too many places. They did have it in a few stores, corner stores, which are all over New York, in the Bronx, bodegas. And it was either the 12 packs of this or the 6 packs of the 16 ounce pint cans. I have seen regular Schaefer in Virginia, along the Appalachian Mountains, uh, US Highway 11 slash and also I, Interstate 81 is the main road there, but the old highway is 11, and you get off 81 and you take 11 to go through the towns. 11 is a long road. It goes from New Orleans in the city limits of New Orleans literally to the Canadian border. That's no joke. I drove on it once. Uh, and I think I was in a, I know I was in Chihuahua. Got off and went around to 11. I went to, I think it was Lion Foods. Lion food store in the head. The 16 ounce can, six packs in the 12 ounce. Um, years ago they made a Schaefer Bach. In the 90s with the ice beer craze they made Schaefer Ice. Schaefer Genuine Draft. None of that stuff made it. Today there's only this and the light and the silver and blue and red cans. Uh, in the 40s Schaefer developed sort of a craft beer brand before there was craft beer, you know. Um, similar to like, you know, the Velvet Underground was a punk rock band 10 years before there was punk rock, you know, type of situation. Um, it was called Schaefer Extra Pale, and they went into all about it was, you know, like a really premier beer and it was extra pale and but in those days the early attempts to make craft beers what we would call craft beers they just seems from what I could tell mystified customers and they just didn't buy them and they were using all those expensive ingredients they made Erlanger from Schlitz and they had Ondecker from Paps all malt all expensive ingredients and they talked about in that 1939 video how it was like made by the German Rhein Heitzgebot. And uh, in all of this stuff, and people just generally did not buy it. And then when Fritz Maytag and Anchor Steam reformulated in 1971 and re restarted, actually restarted the brewery, it had kind of gone out of business. They put out as a craft beer. And that slowly started the movement. So that really is the date you can go for the modern craft beer movement, 1971. But anyway, Schaefer is certainly not that. It's a um, macro beer that's lingering on in a few marketplaces. Uh, it does have a distinctive flavor. I don't think you would mistake it for a different, another beer. I haven't done a taste challenge, but I think I could pick it out. I think I could pick it out. Could be wrong. Dr. Dave, the beer professor, formerly Beer Sampling with Dave. He said, you can't tell the difference, you're full of it. And I said, that's, um, I said, I'm going to see, I'm going to show him wrong. He's always dogging on the macro beers. And then I did taste challenges one after the other, and I kept failing, and I couldn't get them right. And I said, well, Dave was right after all. He was right. A few times I, told, I could tell him apart, but I really couldn't, generally. Um, regardless, this is a sweet beer. It's got a noticeable hop profile. It's not exactly what you would call a hoppy beer, but it does have a hop 
profile that's enjoyable, um, adds a little spice to the flavor. Um, Schaefer was always, for the longest time, marketed as intentionally a budget beer, and their tagline was Schaefer, the one beer to have when you're having more than one. And uh, if you watch the old commercials, they say, TV commercials, it's not that first glass of Schaefer that makes it, it's that second and that third glass that lets you know that you're really drinking some good. So that's what they were saying, you know. You got to do some major sessioning to really appreciate it. I can go along with that. Um, actually, I never do major sessioning, but you know I can grasp the concept. Um, so I would recommend it if you've never had it. You may never see it. Um, you know, beer advocate, rape beer, hating it, of course, but we can't worry too much about that. Um, mm hmm. I suppose that's it for the regular beer project. I've already done Schaefer, Schaefer Revisited, Schaefer Out of a Bottle, Sharif Mansour tries Schaefer Beer. Uh, so I think I pretty much uh, beat this horse to death, and um, there's no use doing it again. So thank you for watching this video production of the regular beer project. And I appreciate your viewership. Oh. Schaefer was started in 1842 by Frederick and Maximilian Schaefer, F and M Schaefer, and then in 1981 it was bought by Stroh's, who turned around in 1999 and sold it to Paps, who currently owns it today. That's the story there. Thank you.